My name is Ramesh Jasti. I'm an associate professor at the University of Oregon. My general area of research is in building molecules, so I construct um, little small molecular cylinders. Specifically, what we've been interested in um, lately is actually trying to build molecular versions of cylinders. If you think about it, you know, in the macroscopic world, there's cylinders everywhere. Like if you build a building, you know, there's going to be cylinders in it. And in a microscopic world, in biology, there's cylinders everywhere, for instance, in an ion channel. But as a chemist, it's kind of interesting to try to think of how would you construct one out of atoms and make it from the ground up, you can say. Um, and so that's what the area of research that we've been focusing on. A carbon nanotube is a small cylinder made of carbon atoms that's about one one thousandth of the width of your hair. So it can be a millimeter long, but it's a nanometer in diameter. So it's a little, small, tiny, nano-sized wire. The current methods to produce carbon nanotubes give you really a heterogeneous mixture of nanotubes, where the structures are, are different enough that they have different physical properties. So some of them could be a wire, but some of them could be a semiconductor. And the current ways to make these, you can't make one over the other. The way that we're trying to approach this, you could potentially make any one of those carbon nanotubes in a, in a controlled way. A nanohoop is a small slice of a carbon nanotube, and it's a word that we kind of coined to, 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 to match a carbon nanotube, so we call these carbon nanohoops. What you see in these vials are solutions of these carbon nanohoops that we've prepared. Depending on the diameter of these hoops, they fluoresce different colors. So this is really unique in the fact that depending on the size of something, you can change the electronic and optical properties of it. So what I love about chemistry is that it, it's kind of a special type of science in that if you think about physics and biology, there's a lot of observation, but chemists can create things that don't exist, and that type of creativity, I think, is really unique to chemistry. We're really breaking into structures that have never existed on this planet, really, and we can study those and see what they behave like, and there's a lot of possibility for new applications. Currently, the research that we're doing, we're really just introducing new structures that nobody really knows exactly what these things are going to be great for, but the potential is huge in that we're breaking into a new type of thing that doesn't exist, and so we'll see where it goes. The students in my lab, um, you know, I usually give them a pretty loose general idea of a thesis project, and they really decide what they want to do and how they want to drive it forward, and so they're the real drivers of the, the research in the lab. So I'm passionate about teaching because I think that, you know, the, probably the biggest product that a faculty member makes is the students that they educate. And those students go on to do, you know, lots of research that one individual cannot do themselves. And so it's very exciting to be recognized for that.